One of my favorite moments of dissonance in the, is in the third symphony, the Eroica. Towards the end of the exposition, Beethoven confronts you with the following. Did you just hear this? You got to admire this beauty of a dissonance here. There are several terrible dissonances clashing here. And Beethoven doesn't content himself to strike this chord just once. You have to hear it for an entire measure, three times in a row. A big forte. Oh boy. I still remember hearing these chords for the first time and thinking Beethoven couldn't possibly, but Beethoven did. And you can only imagine how offensive and brutish of an impression this must have been to his early 19th century audience. You know what this chord here reminds me of? It's not very far from, from this one. This is the Beethoven here, and it reminds me of something that sounds like this. It's an F flat, perfectly consonant chord, but here we have an E flat 7. If you don't recognize it here, let me play it here. Let me play it in the rhythm that you, you'll likely recognize it in. Stravinsky, Sacre du Printemps, premiered 180 years after Beethoven's third symphony premiere. That premiere actually did lead to physical violence and writing. But here's the crucial difference. Beethoven's chord, as unexpected and bold as it is, does resolve rather quickly. And it resolves as clearly as it possibly could. So, Beethoven is extreme in the sense that he creates an extreme moment of dissonance and tension and then follows it with a complete resolution. It's an emotional roller coaster. But could Beethoven have written something like Stravinsky did, this kind of disharmony? I think it's actually not inconceivable, but Beethoven would have still wanted to resolve it maybe it would have been something like that. But in Stravinsky, where does this chord lead us to? Absolutely nowhere. It is just a big, brash, rhythmic, brutish sound. So you see that here, the dissonance isn't a means towards creating a sense of direction and a sense of motion in music. It is not used as a means to create a yearning for resolution and harmony. The purpose of the dissonance here seems to be the dissonance itself. <laughs> 